Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So with my friends at Yarnspirations.com. Today we're gonna do the Sailor's Knot Dishcloth and we're gonna be using Lily Sugar and Cream today. Remember for your kitchen project, or projects, sorry, this is my third outtake of saying that, um, you're going to be using 100% cotton. So it could be Bernat Handy Crafter cotton just like you see and just make sure it's 100%. If you want to double strand, so you use two strands at the same time and uh, increase the thickness of this, you can use this as a hot pad too which is kinda cool. So we're going to look at this pattern a little more carefully because there is some weaving techniques that are going to happen in this but those will be done near the end of the project. So let's begin our journey and take a look closer at the instructions. Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern, please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. So let's take a look at the instructions here. We have a main a loop which is this one here. This is done as a as a round. The other two are done in rows and what you're going to do is just going to kind of just weave it in afterward and then seal it in after you've done the weaving technique. So that's something that we can decide to do. So we're gonna be doing this today and I'm gonna be using three colors and just to separate those out and let's begin our journey and start with the main loop with a five millimeter size H crochet hook in order to begin. So let's begin by creating a slip knot. It's actually Easter um, tomorrow. So um, we're going to begin uh, and just gonna do some Easter colors by the time this comes out Easter will be long gone. So I need you to chain 52 and I'm gonna show you a little secret to not twist your chain. So just do 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Once you have the 10 just pull that off and just go back make sure it's not twisted and just put the first loop on and then I want you to put this back into position. So we had 10 already done. So then you continue along now to 52, ignore this. So 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20 and go all the way to 52 and you'll notice this chain will not twist when you do it in this process. I'll see you at the end of 52. Once you have 52 on here like I do, you're gonna yarn over, pull through and you're also going to pull through here and the chain should not be twisted if you did it in the same format. So let's begin round number one. So as we start round number one, you're going to notice immediately that we're not actually on a corner at all but we will be creating the corner shortly. So to start, you need to chain one and you're going to just in the back hump only, just turn it over and you need to do the next six in a row. It's gonna be tight so just bear with it and just work your way through it. If your dishcloth is too uh, loose, what happens is that it, when you go to use it, it's gonna fall apart on you so it is gonna be tight. Okay, so we have to do six. So we wanna do one and keep moving along the back of the chain, so the back hump of the chain. So I'm a bit shaky today. I was using power tools yesterday and my hands are a little bit shaking as a result. So we got two so far and then three, four, five and six. Once the six are in, you're now going to do your first corner. In this next chain, I need you to put in three single crochets into the same chain. So one, two and three. So there's your first corner. So the repeat pattern going all the way around this is that the next 12 will be a single crochet. So I'll take you through that as well. So we have one, two, three, eight, nine, ten, eleven and twelve. Once your twelve are in, that's your next corner is in the next stitch. So you're gonna put in three 
single crochets into that next chain. So one, two, and three. So, so here's your repeat pattern. You're going to do the next 12 which will take you and make this side. Then you'll put three single crochets approximately over here somewhere after you get 12. So it's the next stitch after. Then you'll do the next 12 stitches and then three single crochets and when you come back around there will only be six single crochets left before you get here and make sure that when you get there you don't twist the chain and that's where I'm gonna pick you up. So please do this for the repeat going around. So I'm coming around and I'm just turning. So I did my last 12 so it looks like it's a square so far. And so I have the last six that will take me back to where I started. So we have one, two, three, four, Five and six. So make sure when you attach that there is no twisting action going on. Okay, so make sure you can see it laying flat before you attach. So I'm just doing the last one. So one, two, three, four, five, and this is the sixth one going in. And then I want to attach it to the first single crochet that I started with. Like that. And now let's continue our journey. I'm not gonna weave in my ends until the end and there is the center main loop. Let's begin round number two. This pattern is actually pretty straightforward. If you can identify the middle one of the grouping of three that make up a corner right there, that is always gonna be the corner. So when you start off, you're going to chain three. One, two, three. That'll count as the first double crochet and so you're now just gonna double crochet until you hit those corners. And when you hit those corners, you need to put in three double crochets to make the turn. Sometimes in double crochet it's five but in this case they want us only to do three. So you can count the stitches. It has that information on the free pattern. It's in the, available in the video description if you need that. And you wanna continue along and here's the middle one that's right here. So you put three double crochets in there. One, two, and three. And then continue along. So go down the side and then in the middle one put in three uh, double crochets as well and go all the way around and this is round number two. So I'm coming around on the second round here and it's just double crocheting in all those stitches except for the corners you get your three double crochet as I mentioned. So you're gonna come all the way back around and when you come around this here always appears to be an extra stitch. It's not. I'm gonna give you a little secret. This is not in the pattern. This is experience. So what I would do to hide this gapping space because let me show you. What happens here is when you go to join and you finish it you end up with this gap that is really kind of obvious. Do you see that? So to get rid of that and this is experience so this is not in the pattern. What I would do to not add any extra stitches just go in and just pull through and pull through two and hold. Go into where it's joining here in, pull through, pull through two and hold and then pull through all three loops. That's a two together double crochet and what you're doing is that you're adding in this here so when you go to join it's more closed. And it may look really obvious right now but it's better than having a gap and you kind of lose your eyes on doing that in the future. So this is kind of a neat idea and we're going to move on to round number three next. So number three let's just start. We're gonna chain three. It's a slightly different count than what we had before and you just need to double crochet yourself all the way to the corner. The middle one of the grouping of three is now gonna get five double crochets. Okay and that will allow it to turn even better. Okay so let's just get, get there for a moment. So you're just slamming in a double crochet in each. And then the middle one of the group is going to get five double crochets in it. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. 
then starting on the one right after this is beginning. It's kinda hidden there because there's a lot, a lot of stuff going on. It's right here and you're just going to double crochet yourself all the way to the next corner and then put in five double crochets in that corner too. And I need you to do this all the way around. This is round number three. So I'm coming around on number three. Just plopping in my double crochets. And we're gonna have the same situation happen if I just join it and it will create this gap. So this is the last stitch. Technically I would just join it to the top here and it will create that large gap here. So you can do that technique I showed you as the two together double crochet. So you're doing that. And that'll help fill in that space so that it's more hidden and then you join it to the top of the chain three and we move on to round number four. Do you see how more solid that looks? And because the light is behind it, it's more obvious that I've done that like that. So let's begin the fourth and final round. The fourth and final round, you're just gonna chain up one and apply one single crochet in each of the stitches going around except for the middle one. So you can count it. It's in the instructions if you want that. But see the grouping of five? It's the middle one that's going to get four single crochets. So if you can identify that, you don't have to count. It's up to you on how you would like to do that. The counts are available on the pattern if you would like to download that. Sometimes it's in these tutorials, it's just better to show you where to go than it is to obsessively count so you can enjoy the journey. So I'm currently in the middle one of the group. So there's one in, in there already. So I got two, three, and four. So that allows me to do a turn and then starting in the next stitch, just single crochet until you get to the middle one of the grouping of five and then put in four single crochets. Please do this all the way around. This is the fourth and final round. So I'm coming around on the final. This is round number four. This is it. So I would go into the end. I would not place in like a two together single crochet to fill in the gap because it will pull together. So you're just gonna end it here and you'll see that there's a nice corner here. The corner is going on and you have your nice center main loop. So let's uh, just quickly show you how to fasten in any yarns that you have. So you're just gonna pull through and turn to the back side. And then I need you to place this into a tapestry needle. You are gonna use this even if it's a hot pad that's something that may not be scrubbing dishes or maybe that's ornamental. Still take the time to weave in your ends. And I just want to glide this yarn through some fiber. Do not interfere with the outside edge. Just stay with inside the stitches. So when I turn it over, it's, see, it's inside. So I'm gonna pull through and the first pull through is important because if you pull too tight, you change the shape. So you wanna pull so it's relatively taut but not to the point where it's misshaping your project. You wanna separate fibers as you're doing this. I've been seeing complaints lately about that. Um, people's stuff falling out. So if you go right in between the actual strands, it most likely will weasel its way out. But if you actually break through the plies itself, it's awesome. So any loose ends that you have, I want you to weave it in in this manner. It's just easier. So you have to do that with your center beginning one as well. And we're going to pick up and we're gonna do the main loop which is going to need two of those and I'm gonna do one off camera to make sure I understand the pattern and then I'm going to uh, show you how to do it. So I did the very first one. I got some hot tips for you. I'm glad I did it first because I'm gonna show you some secrets that are not kind of in the pattern. I, it, basically my experience given to you as well. The other thing I was thinking about as I was working through this is that the thing about these knots is that they can come and they can kind of uh, unravel from each other. They, they will always stay in position but when you're using it or anything they can kind of shift. So what I'm going to do at the end is I'm gonna show you how to trace the border to lock each one of these permanently into position. So that's something that you can decide to do if you want to but it's not in the pattern. So let's do a middle loop. I'm recommending to you that you have two stitch markers or just a two spare pieces of yarn. We're gonna use those as center points for the ends. So when you're working through this, once you understand the ends, it's a lot easier than manically counting everything. So once you understand where the end is, you can just count backwards just a few stitches instead of having to count the entire rounds. That's something I learned. So you're going to begin and just start with whatever color you want. And I need you to chain 
a total of 59. So this is not a continuous round. So this is just going to be open. So you'll have an open edge just like that. And so I need you to just chain 59 and meet me back here in a moment. You'll need to do two of these. So I'm just gonna show you one time. So one, two, three, four, five. Go all the way to 59. Meet me back here in a moment. So once you have your 59, we're ready to go. So you're going to have to count of this going across. So let's just do it together nice and slow. Second chain from the hook, get the back hump only and I need you to put in a single crochet there. Now here's your counting. In the next 13 chains, single crochet. So let's just do that together. I'll keep the camera going. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. Once you have the 13, the next chain is actually the turning point. So what we're going to do in this next chain is that we're going to apply three single crochets. So we have one and two and three. And hold for me for a second because I, I want you to do something. On the middle one of the grouping of three, I want you to place a stitch marker. This is the center point. And once you understand where this is, and maybe an experienced crochet probably won't need to do this, but I'm recommending you do because it's just gonna save yourself time and a lot of counting later. Put in a stitch marker in that middle one of the grouping of three and just let it hold out of there and we'll be moving that up as we do each time. Now we're gonna go across the back spine of this and we're now going to do the next 28. So we'll do that together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28. Once these 28 are in, the next chain is gonna be the next turning point. So put in three single crochets there. So one, two, and three. And in the second one, like we did before of the group, I will need you to place in a stitch marker. I wrong, I re really suggest you do it. So if you say yeah, yeah, yeah and then you get all mad at yourself that you don't know where the stitches are then <laughs> that's on you. So let's, uh, is that mean? You can let me know in the comments. <laughs> it's being honest. Okay, so once you get your three in there and you have it marked, you're ready for the remaining. And so there should be a total of, looking at the pattern really quickly here, the last 14 are in so we can count it to make sure it's balanced. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12, 
13 and look at that. No stunts or anything. The 14th is the last one. So my counts are perfect. So once you have that done, turn your work and let's talk about our row number two. So for those that decided to do the stitch markers, that is the middle. So what I want you to concentrate on, we're going to start, we're gonna chain three and we're gonna slam in some double crochets. The middle tells you where exactly it is and so in, in row number two, the stitch before the middle is gonna have two double crochets. The middle one here is gonna have three double crochets and the one right after is, is two. So remember it's two, three, two. So the pattern has you counting all these stitches in order to get there but now that you marked it, why bother, right? You know where it is. So what I want you to do is just chain three and then double crochet yourself until the stitch before the stitch marker. Okay, so you don't need to count. You can if you want to, it's up to you. And I'll be right back in a moment. So just put me on pause and do it and I'll be right back. So I'm making my way to that stitch marker. So I want the stitch right before the stitch marker. So I'm just gonna continue and the stitch before the stitch marker right here is gonna have two double crochets in it. And watch what I do with the stitch marker one. It's gonna have three. But wait, there's more. I sound like a Ron Popeil <laughs> infomercial. Anybody remember that? <laughs> you can leave me a comment. Okay, so we got three in there. I'd recommend the middle one of the grouping of three, move that stitch marker up so that you know where that is. I'm telling you, it's gonna save you. So now it's been marked. So the one right after the stitch marker down here is gonna have two. So to recap what we just did is we did two before the stitch marker. The stitch marker there's three. We moved up our stitch marker to the middle one and the uh, stitch right after the stitch marked one has two. So now you're just gonna blaze all the way to the other side to the stitch before the stitch marker and that's where I'm gonna pick you up. So put me on pause and get there and I'll see you in just a moment over there. So I'm coming along and I'm watching for those stitch marker to tell me what to do next. So do you remember? So the one before the stitch marker right here, it's cause the stitch marker is here, is gonna have two double crochet. The one with the stitch marker is going to have how many? Did you say three? That's the right answer. The middle one of the grouping of three, move that stitch marker up so you can find it in the future. And the one after the stitch marker is going to have two double crochets in it. So the remaining all the way to the end of the row now is just one double crochet in each and I can trust you to do that. And so please do that and then turn your work and we're gonna get ready for row number three. So let's talk row number three. The one with the stitch marker is the center point. The next two stitches before the stitch marker is gonna have something. It's actually gonna have two double crochets each. The one with the stitch marker will have three and the two after the stitch marker will have two double crochets each and then the rest of the stitches are just gonna be one double crochet. So to recap, you're just gonna double crochet and then the second one before the stitch marker is two double crochet. The next one is two double crochet. The stitch marker is three double crochets. Move that stitch marker up to the middle one of that grouping of three. The next one is two and the next one is two and then the remaining is all just double crochet. So start this row, so chain three and one double crochet and I'll see you at the second one before the stitch marker to show you exactly how it's done. So I'm crocheting along and I'm looking for the second one before the stitch marker which is right here. So I got one more to go before I'm there. So the two before the stitch marker is gonna be two double crochets each. The stitch marker is gonna have three double crochets in it and move that stitch marker up to the middle one of that grouping of three. Are you liking the stitch marker idea? I don't know. Just For me as a crocheter I can identify it but I will tell you um, while I'm here. I actually drew it out in crochet diagram format. Uh huh. Even myself I've been crocheting a long time sometimes I have to visualize it. So the next two after the stitch marker is gonna be two double crochet and then you can just blaze on down to the other side just with one double crochet in each going down. 
So I'll see it at the second one before the next stitch marker. This continues to be round number three or row number three. Sorry, rows and rounds. Who knows what's happening today. So I'll see you at the next stitch marker. Two stitches before actually. So continuing along and we're gonna be hitting that stitch marker soon. So I look for the stitch marker. I'm looking for the two before it and that's where the story begins. So those two will each be two double crochet. I don't know if you answer me back on these videos or not but <laughs> some people say they actually answer my questions. Okay, so in the middle one here, this is the stitch mark one. You're going to put in three double crochet and what are you gonna do with that stitch marker? Yeah, you're gonna stick it through the stitch. <laughs> I can imagine what you said. Based on my laugh, you know what I was thinking. So now the next two after the stitch marker is two double crochet. Okay, so what are you gonna do all the way to the end? Yep, you're just gonna do one double crochet all the way to the end. And so get to the end, turn your work and then we're gonna do the final row together and uh, hopefully you're still having a good time at this point. <laughs> okay, so you got this far in the tutorial. <laughs> you're still in one piece. Here's the thing. In the final row, we have the middle stitch marker and it's going to be the four before the stitch marker that we each have two single crochets and the one with the stitch marker is gonna be two and then the one uh, four after it is going to be total of two single crochets each. So there's a total count of nine stitches that will each have uh, nine single crochets. The reason why I wanted you to identify that is so that you know where to start. So you're going to start the fourth before the stitch marker, continue and finish the fourth one after the stitch marker. So let's uh, continue into round number four. This is the final. So chain up one and I'll see you at the fourth stitch before the stitch marker. Yep, that's a promise and I'll be back in just a moment. So I'm now at the fourth stitch before the stitch marker. One, two, three and four. What I would do is I would just count nine in a row. So just put two in each. So there's two. That's one of nine. This is two of nine. Three of nine. Four of nine. five of nine, six of nine and seven of nine I think is from Star Trek. Seven, who doesn't like that character? Well, I do for sure. So eight of nine and nine and nine. So now you've just spun your way all the way around. So now you're just gonna continue with one single crochet in each and I'll see you at the fourth uh, stitch before the next chain. Um, before the next stitch, uh, before the next, before the next stitch marker. Sorry, I'm, I'm tripping on my own invisible line in my mouth today. Okay, so I'm at the fourth stitch before the stitch marker. So we're gonna start that all over again. Put two into each. So one of nine, two of nine, three of nine, four of nine, five of nine, six of nine, seven of nine, there we go, eight of nine and nine of nine. And they just, just continue to go across and then just one single crochet in each and that will be the end of this panel and I'll be back in a moment. So I'm coming up to the end of this panel. What I forgot to tell you and we'll have to do it now before we get too far is that we're currently on round num or row number four which is the uh, wrong side of the work. So what I'm gonna strongly recommend to you, so just get right to the last one and leave this a long enough tail that you can sew the two ends together. And before you go too much farther, I want you to turn, just flip this over and turn the project around as if you're starting a new row. This is the right side. So if you wanna make a mark of it, just put in a stitch marker on this side and so therefore when you weave it into your project, when you're putting it together, that you have your right sides facing up. So I already actually marked the other one. 
right here so I know where it is. So now it's train wreck time. We're gonna start weaving. I'm not very good at puzzles so you'll see that at probably a train wreck on camera. <laughs> and uh, we're going to begin and we're gonna start weaving things together and then we're gonna start joining. So using this schematic we're going to weave things. So I would start with the center square and then just try to work it out. <laughs> Let's begin. So let's see if we can do this in one take. So put your diamond shape. Match the schematic like so and just grab any one of them. It doesn't matter. And just kind of like make it look like it belongs to each other. So this appears to go underneath here and then flip this over. I'm taking my loose ends with me. Flip it over and bring it thing and then here this stays on top and then comes underneath like that. Oh my god I did that in one take. <laughs> okay so we're gonna do that. Then we're gonna take the other one and let's go on the other angle. So how are we gonna look at this one here? This one goes under this and then this little piece goes over. underneath this one and then over the outside back underneath this one and then over that one. Oh my god did I actually do it? <laughs> Wow. Okay so now what I want to do is sew these pieces together that are the loops. So let's grab our tapestry needle. If you cut the longer piece of the tail you can do that and then I'm going to show you something that's not in the pattern in a bit. So let's just grab our tapestry needle and let's play. So with your tapestry needle just weave it on into the section there. And you wanna kinda do like a whip stitch together. So just match the two edges together and just straight going across. So if you just go straight across just match it. It's the same stitch work on both sides. And what I would highly recommend you do not do, don't go into a big gapping space because when it gets pulled on you'll see it. So always just kind of separate your chain work. Okay and then back over. So see that I'm going into the chains itself. And you're just gonna work your way across. So give it a, a few good tugs. I feel like Harry Potter. Now give it a wave. <laughs> Which scene was that from? Oh that was from when they were picking the wand. Now give it a wave. Okay. If you do a nice job on it, it's gonna be almost hidden. Things are never perfect when it's sewn together but you know life isn't perfect if you haven't figured that out yet. Okay so going all the way across. And then just give it a good tug. That's pretty good actually. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just flip it so that I can see the underside of this thing and I wanna secure the ends so it's on the underside. So going on the underside and I will want to kinda just tie things together if I can. So if you wanna form a knot you can. It's on the underside so it won't matter so much. And that'll help secure it. Cotton is one of the strongest fibers out there. 
and a cotton doesn't stretch. This type of cotton doesn't stretch. It's the stitch work that stretches but the actual yarn and it's almost impossible to break it with your hands if you ever tried. It's quite painful actually if you can actually do it. So you're going to do that. You're gonna just weave in your ends. So any weaved, uh, any ends that you have you're gonna wanna do that. Um, I wanna do that and then the other one that one I may want to access from the back side of it. Let's just turn it over carefully. Yeah. So I'm gonna just weave this through the back side like so. So I'm gonna do the same thing and I'll be right back in a moment and we'll, and I'll show you my little tip that I have for you. So this is why they invented tutorials so that you can actually do fun stuff and sometimes cheat if you have to. Start off on an edge, doesn't matter where and I want you just to start with a standing single crochet. So leave it on the hook and pull through the stitch and you have two loops pull through the two that's a standing. So all I'm just gonna do is roughly trace the outside of this with single crochet. So what happens when I get to the green? Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna jump on top of that green like leapfrog. So I'm just going to trace around so that this single crochet is only going around the true outside of this thing. So lay it down flat if you're not sure. So once you think it should jump over, just jump it to the next motif and follow that around. And so you'll follow that around and then jump on over. And so this round here will only be um, on the outside and it will be holding down all the panels together as a one piece unit. That's something that I would do if you weren't watching me. But you're watching me and I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm just gonna remove this out and I am literally just going to kind of just pull it through. And so therefore this will be underneath like that. So when I go to join it now I can turn it to the back side and then just join those two together right there. So just grab your yarn just like I showed you before. Join those uh, pieces together and therefore this side has now been fixed so that you have no joins on the front side. So that's something I made a mistake in doing. That's how I fixed it and I'll continue along. So that's something that you can avoid and I'm gonna continue making my border. Okay, so I'm just, I just keep lying it down and just seeing where I think I can join it to the next one. So it's basically free form and then just jumping on over. Okay, and then I'm just going to join it. And like I did before, just take your tapestry needle and just weave it in on the back side. And therefore what I just did is securing all the exterior panels so they actually belong together. And so when you flip it over, see they're all together. They're not flopping away from each other because they're joined on the exterior. So weave in your ends and this is good to go. This is the Sailor Knot dishcloth, another free pattern by Yarnspirations.com.